Oh, hello, and welcome to the start of a reading vlog. This one is going to be a sci-fi reading vlog, and there are definitely a few sci-fi, quite a few sci-fi on my t physical TBR that I'm really excited about. And so, yeah, I wanted to talk about some of the ones that have been... Um, that have been coming up on my TBR that I'm excited about. So the first one, I actually have already read. <laughs> um, I'm filming this relatively early on in January, just kind of trying to kickstart things after the holidays and really get back into the swing of things. But this is one of the first books that I read this year, um, actually the second book that I read this year. And so, you know, things were still kind of in transition and you know, part of this I read when I was at home for the holidays, part of it right after I got back, and so just filming was not happening. And so I still wanted to talk about it, and still wanted to include it in this vlog, uh, but, you know, it's not going to be in, in the moment or kind of as I'm reading it thoughts. But I did finish this recently enough that I, you know, I still have, remember everything, have quite a few thoughts about it. And that is Goddess in the Machine, and this is by Laura Beth Johnson. And um, this one was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed it. And in this one, you're following two main characters, Andra and Jade. Jade, I hope I'm, hope I'm saying that right. And so Andra is someone who was in a cryo sleep thought that she was going to be asleep for a, a relatively short amount of time, but actually woke up a thousand years later, and people are starting to call her goddess, and so she's very confused. You know, everyone that she knows or has known in her life is now dead, and she's, so one, grieving that, but also two, needing to just figure out, figure out where she is, get her bearings, figure out, you know, try to be able to actually um, kind of integrate into society while being viewed as a goddess somehow. And she's very confused. She needs to figure that out. And, you know, I, you know, at first is trying to say, I'm not a goddess. I'm just someone who was in a cryo sleep for too long. You know, I, I have no idea where I am. I, you know, I don't know what's going on. And, but people are still calling are still calling her goddess and still trying to kind of follow her every move. And and so it's kind of a very intense situation to find yourself waking up. Like not only are there the complications with that, but there are just so many added layers here um, that I thought were interesting. And she, so she's trying to navigate that and also trying to figure out who she can trust, um, trying to figure out who she can communicate well with because language has changed a lot over that period of time. And so one of the interesting things is you know, Laura Beth Johnson actually changes, um, so for the characters that are in that present day, and Jade is one of these characters, he's in kind of her future, um, the book's present day, and so it's kind of interesting because his chapters from his perspective and the way that some of these other characters are talking throughout her chapters as well, it, you know, it's not that you can't understand it, uh, but if you want it to be modern English and you're going to be frustrated by trying to figure out the slang and the terms and how people communicate a thousand years from now, if that's going to be a frustration, then... Um, maybe not the book for you, but if that kind of intrigues you, then I think it was a fun way to really make you f kind of put yourself in Andrew's shoes and her trying to figure out how things, how things are structured, you know, what is society like, and part of that is literally just figuring out how people communicate with each other and how people are talking with each other. And again, I didn't find it to be so convoluted or anything that I couldn't figure out what these other characters were saying. Like you very, at least I, I was able to very quickly kind of pick up on how things changed and figure out the meaning of, of sentences from characters in this future. Um, and so it wasn't really a problem for me. Actually for me, listening to the audiobook as well kind of helped because you're less focused on making sure that you're understanding each individual word, you know, and making sure that if you if a sentence or a thought makes sense then even if maybe there was one word that you were kind of maybe would have been confused or hung up on if you were reading physically it at least helped me 
to have the audiobook, maybe that wouldn't be the case for everyone. Uh, but that, that was just an added interesting element here. And so she is trying to figure out how this goddess situation is part of um, part of a prophecy or part of a, a larger story um, that's important to people in the time that she's waking up. And so she figures out that maybe there were some goddesses in the past. And so she's just trying to figure out, you know, can she communicate with those other goddesses? And like, are those people from her time? You know, who are these other goddesses? Um, you know, what happened to them and kind of what was their story and how would that impact what she needs to do? Um, can she successfully either convince people that she's a goddess and, you know, a little bit of magic is involved in, in a sense there? You know, can she convince people that she's a goddess or can she convince people that it doesn't matter that she isn't one? Because there's also um, some things that are going to affect her safety or make her not safe if, you know, either way, either if she is a goddess, she needs to be protected or if she isn't, then maybe she's not fulfilling a prof fulfilling this prophecy or fulfilling what people feel like she needs to be doing in her role as a goddess. And so either way, she needs to very carefully navigate this. Um, and there are some, um, there is a, a kind of a dome that people are in that, and the, she needs to kind of help fix some things about this and help protect the people that live there. Um, and so that's part of what she's supposed to be doing is protecting these people and kind of fixing this dome but she needs to figure out how how she can do that or be a part of that anyway i was super intrigued and you know there are definitely some twists and turns along the way that i thought were super fun um, i'm very intrigued to continue and to read the next book i think it's a duology if i'm not mistaken um, so I'm definitely very intrigued to read the next book in this series and see where things go from here. Because it, it, definitely some things were escalating. There definitely were some interesting um, twists and turns and her figuring out the politics of the world, but also just how to navigate her part in it. I thought were super interesting. Um, and so, yeah. So this was one that I finished before I even started filming clips. But I am in the beginning stages of reading another sci-fi so i wanted to go ahead and include it in this vlog and that is gleanings stories from the arc of the sci so i have read the arc of the sci series by neil schusterman and so of course i was super intrigued that there was a collection of short stories coming out that are set in that world i'm not usually one for short stories i mean just just for me they don't tend to be able to kind of give enough oomph and give enough um, connection to the characters or the plot or what's going on or be complex enough to really impact me very much typically and so they just at least the ones that I've tried so far and I, you know I can't completely dismiss an entire form of telling stories as something that won't work for me right like that's I'm not saying that um, just the ones that I've tried so far that tends to be my experience with them but this I think could be an exception or this kind of collection of short stories because I'm already I'm already well versed in the world having read three chunky books <laughs> before that are set in this world and so it, it's kind of a much different feeling because I am familiar with some of the characters and, and granted I think some of these stories are kind of cut, jump around at different times they're not necessarily all going to be set around the time of the events that take place in the main arc of the scythe series but it feels less jarring to kind of jump in like you're familiar with the world you're familiar with at least some of the characters potentially um and kind of the way things work and his storytelling style you know you're already kind of familiar with some of those and so it at least to me you're able to communicate more in a short amount of time because you don't need to do as much world building because you've done that in other novels so i wouldn't necessarily at least from the little bit i've read so far i wouldn't necessarily recommend just reading these stories without having read the arc of the scythe series because um, it doesn't seem like he's going to do a ton of that world building 
here. It seems like he's going to say, expect that you've read the series and are just interested in just some other random little interesting side stories um, to give a few things a bit more context or just kind of enjoy yourself in this world a little bit more. And so, but I'm only one and a half stories in, so. <laughs> uh, but I really did enjoy the first one. And I think, I, I, and the reason I'm saying what I am so far is because I think that first story was very effective because I already, you already know how gleanings work, you already know the Scythum, you know the Thunderhead, you know how those groups interact with political leaders, and you know what, you know some of the main characters in that story, um, although at a different time in their life than in the main series. And so I think it's effective because we already know all of those things, and then you can just jump right in and it doesn't feel like you're lost, or at least I, you know, it didn't feel for me like I was lost and needed to kind of orient myself to the world again, you know? Um, so I'm excited to continue. This was a gift from my lovely boyfriend for Christmas, and so I'm, I'm super excited to continue on with this one. So I will continue, uh, continue on in gleanings and, and update this vlog once I have read some more of the stories and, and maybe have um, some more thoughts. But yeah, so this is, uh, you know, and then once I read more sci-fi stories as well that I have on, on my TBR, then I will, you know, I will continue on with this vlog as I, as I read a couple more sci-fi stories and then, yeah, just go from there. So I have finished Gleanings. I meant to check in as I was reading a bit more, but actually I think it's it's fine that I finished this one. There isn't really going to be a ton that I can say uh, because, you know, I don't want to spoil each individual short story, for example. So it's really kind of hard to check in in the middle of this one anyway, but I absolutely love this one and I think if you are a huge fan of the Ark of the Scythe series or even just in general the world even if one particular book had some things that you didn't love about it but you love the world you want to dive into the world and some of the concepts and some of the thought experiments more I think you'll really enjoy this and I think there's a nice variety of stories in here they cover different time periods so some of the stories happen earlier on from the main series and you follow the earlier life of some of the characters in the series so maybe like for example might follow a scythe early on in their scythe hood or even uh, you know some before their scythe and you kind of follow follow them before and the process of them becoming a scythe and uh, you know, you're trying to figure out who you're following and for some of them it's not characters at all that you've met in the original series but they're continuing some of the thought experiments of well what would actually happen if in this world what would actually happen if there were Sice and the Thunderhead and what does that mean for society there are some of the stories that just focus on just some other interesting aspects of the world that maybe didn't get explored in the original series, but just would be things that as you're thinking about it, you're like, yeah, actually it would make sense that that would be a result of this world and kind of what's in it and the implications of that. You're also following some stories that happen soon after, soon after, uh, you know, the technology was there to be able to make sure that people didn't have to die of the causes that they do now. So soon after the mortal age ends. So you're following some stories that are in that transition period and what it was like for people to have a, a sudden cutoff from some generations that are in the mortal age and some that are in the post-mortal age. And what does it mean for trying to communicate between these generations anyway you, you have stories from all over the place and i really feel like if you enjoy the series and everything that it was doing i really feel like you'll you'll love this collection of short stories and i really feel like my instinct uh when i'm talking about in general when short stories can work for me i, I really do feel like this kind of scenario where you already know the characters so they don't need to do that build up you, you know the world, you know the rules, you know the players, or you, you know, maybe you're learning new things along the way, but you, it's easy to jump back into the world. Um, and you know, you wouldn't be able to pull off some of these short stories if you didn't have that context, because some of them rely on you already having that background.
Uh, and so you know, these kinds of ones work for me because you can do a lot in a short space if you don't need to do that character work, that world building as much. Um, anyway, I really enjoyed it and if you haven't picked it up because you've been nervous about what it would mean to pick up a short story collection in a fantasy world, maybe that isn't usually your jam or a sci-fi world, maybe not usually your jam but you've been curious, I I would say go for it personally. I think, I think they were a great time. Uh, so yeah, that is it for the moment and I will check in when I have read another book for this vlog. So, I have read one more book for this vlog, well, DNF one book for now, and read another book for this vlog. So, the DNF for now is actually a huge surprise to me. I tried Ancillary Justice by Anne Lucky, and I think this, I just need to come back to this. Um, I read 50 pages of it, listened on audio for a good portion of that, and I think there was just there was a lot of world building, you're just kind of thrown in, or at least I felt kind of thrown in, and I wasn't feeling oriented at all after 50 pages, and I just, I felt like I was missing so much, and I, I don't know, it just, it just wasn't quite clicking right now, but I really do want to give it another go at some point, but this is going to be... A DNF for now, but I then did pick up Winter's Orbit by Everina Maxwell and absolutely adored this one. So this is a political murder mystery sci-fi romance. It's a mashup of a whole bunch of different things, but I think it works really well. Um, you're following a couple of people who have an arranged political marriage and, um, you know, and that for there's a treaty that's going to be renewed or an agreement that's going to be renewed between a bunch of different worlds, including their two worlds. And it's going to be kind of the guiding document for the next 20 years. And so it's, it's an incredibly important period. And so having that alliance and having that relationship for it is going to be really important in that process. And one of the people who is in this arranged marriage, um, their partner actually had recently, their previous partner had recently died. And, you know, there are some questions of, you know, was it an accident? Did someone kill that person? And that kind of brings to light some things. And there's some investigations going on that our two main characters get in the midst of um, pertaining to that. And it's it's just so much fun. So I don't think the world building was, like the world building was kept relatively simple since there were quite a few things going on. So there's this mystery plot line um, that I think is developed pretty well. There's also the romantic element. So the two people who are in this arranged marriage are two very different people and at first think that they're not necessarily going to get along in any sort of romantic sense and you know they're hoping that that could be the case but at first they're they're thinking that you know there's some misunderstandings and some awkwardness and some things that make them question whether the other person how the other person feels about them and so there's a good bit of the book that is kind of them trying to trying to work through those feelings and try to be honest with how they're feeling when they feel like the other person doesn't necessarily feel that way just because they kind of communicate in different ways and are two very different people and they need to work through that to realize that they both do actually really like each other and could build a strong romantic connection in that partnership that has kind of been forged by circumstances and they're just so precious together and I think the narrator did a really great job I did listen to this on audio I think the narrator did a really great job bringing those two characters to life and kind of through his voice building that awkwardness building that um just building their connection, I, I think he did a really great job with that. I adored some of the side characters as well. I was just intrigued by this mystery plot that was going on. I adored this one. I thought it was super fun. Um, so if that at all sounds up your alley, 
would highly recommend. Uh, so with that, I'm going to wrap up this sci-fi vlog. It has overall been a pretty successful vlog, I think, and hopefully I will be able to get this one and another vlog out. It is currently approaching mid-March, um, so I'm hoping I can get a couple of the vlogs that I've been working on for the past bit. Um, I'm hoping I can get a couple of those wrapped up and edited and up by the end of the month. So we'll see. Anyway, but thank you so much for watching me read some highly anticipated science fiction reads. And let me know if any of these were of interest or if you've read them and what you thought of them. And if you have any recommendations based on some of these books, then of course also let me know or let me know some sci-fi's that you really love. And I will link my Instagram down below as well as more information about how you can support the Black Lives Matter movement. And I will see you in the next one. Bye, everyone. <laughs>